This is Infection, the H1Z1 podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, April 28th, 2015, episode 15. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infection. Infection is your source for the latest information on H1Z1. We bring you the latest news, change logs, developments, strategies, and speculations each and every week. My name is Nick Craig. At Gamecast Live is my Twitter. Infectionpodcast.com is the website. Joining me back again, Brian Aldridge. Yes, hello. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, go ahead and go to biteoftech.com. Or if you want to go to infectionpodcast.com, click on contact us. You're more than welcome to do that there. Or, of course, you can go to google.com forward slash plus Brian Aldridge. And that is with an I. So that'll find my, my Google Plus page. Do you want to plug your LinkedIn? Maybe your... Uh... Um, no. Do you, do you have like a four square that people could like contact you on as if, well? If you go to, <laughs> if you go to biteoftech.com, there is like every single social link. Really? It's, it's got a whole list of them Let's because, oh, a bite of well, tech, I, I just want, oh. no, hold on. I'm actually working on my uh, website while you bite of tech something. right now. It's just, I'm, it's not pulling up Brian. Well, how about you give me 10 seconds? Well, how about you don't plug your website on the show and have it not up? This is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't <laughs> expecting you to go on here. Anyways, you can go there now, and if you want to go look at it, you oh, can. Ah, very good. I'm getting a PHP error. <laughs> Back to you. All right. That's no here nor there. Brian's going to be distracted all show. Uh, but no, this, I'm good. This is Infection, uh, the H1Z1 podcast, and uh, we're here. We're going to talk about H1Z1. Uh, again, episode 15. That was a weird intro. 2015, episode 15. A little. I had to <laughs> yeah, like, you get as you get distracted the whole way through. Well, I had to say it. I was like, 2015, episode 15. I had to like. Jazz yeah, it up welcome a to bit. 2015, everybody. Yeah, hello, it's uh, it's January 1st, 2015. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's start off on a little bit of a light note. So finally, Daybreak has uh, re- released their official logo. And this is for the longest time they had this thing on Twitter, and it was just like a pond with like a rainbow font. Um, I yeah. wish I had capped their old logo, uh, but here is the official Daybreak Game Company logo. It's an eye, um, but the eye is like a is a gear, uh, and yeah. it's almost like a paint splat. Um, not not what I was expecting, but I like it. It's it's nice and modern. It's flat. It's not glossy or anything. Um, so yeah, there you go. A l- little light news to start off the show. Well, and I mean. This I didn't know what to expect. I figured there would be something that had to do with Daybreak, and I mean that's more of like a an what is that a falcon's eye or the, something? The Daybreak. What the here? Let's see. The Daybreak. I mean the sun. I think that's the sun moving over the horizon. So that's their Daybreak. To the me, day. it looks like an eye. No, Doesn't it is. It, look no, like an eye? it is an eye. But I'm saying the sun is in the middle of that eye. We're, we oh. should be speculating on the logo. Like people. I guess that's pretty. <laughs> that's a pretty loose inter. I mean, they put a little sun in the eye there as a glint, a, and that's a, supposed to be. D- the day is breaking. All right. Very good. I guess that's. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> it's their logo. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the logo for the next 45 minutes. Uh, strap your seatbelts, yeah. folks. Here we go. Um, so, Brian, what's going on with you this week? Um, H1Z1 so, is in a very interesting state yeah. right now. Um, I mean, where should we... Let's start with... The, so the last patch they did was Thursday. Last Thursday, which was the uh, the 23rd. And that was yes. that was a pretty significant patch that they were doing. Um, we covered all that stuff last week, so... Well, so, I mean, that's the thing is, is last time they made some changes that they... They didn't really say what they were going to do. So, like, they made some changes to the base, and it ended up being a bit pretty big problem for us. And we've gone in there, and just from some of those changes, a lot of us have hardly played this whole week, since, at least since the patch. It's just because it's there's no point in base building, um, and there's no point in even saving things up because we can't secure our base anymore. It's just we can go into it. I don't know if you want to go into it now or a little bit later, but... It is has been really frustrating to where half of us are playing battle royales, half of us, of us are playing other games. We're still on. I mean, we've got twenty something people on Teamspeak still, but half of us are each doing our own thing. Yeah, and that's and something so, interesting. It seems like our like we're very fragmented right now. We we were fragmented last week uh, a little bit, but this week it's pretty significant. If there's hardly anybody playing, and yeah. when there and when there is, um, it's like not a huge group of people. It's like a very small group. It's like there may be five people playing Battle Royale at a time. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not a huge group of people. 
Well, and I mean, I guess it is a representation of, we went over last week, just the drop in players. We've seen that. I mean, the, the fact that we've been able to maintain 20 people for, for this long period of a time mm-hmm. um, is, I mean, that's a pretty good sign because a lot of people, I mean, for the fact that there's a quarter, we're at a quarter of the population of the number of people that have been playing. Mm-hmm. And we still are able to maintain the same number of people. Just imagine how many people we would have in game if, uh, if, 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 if they would have kept that forty thousand people playing simultaneously. Yeah, and it's I mean, we're at ten, we're at ten thousand people playing simultaneously, and we're able to keep our same numbers. Imagine how big of a clan and how many other clans would be much larger if we're able to just maintain the players. Yeah, well, it's something that's interesting. I mean, Brian, we are not like. We're, we're a large clan, but we're not a huge clan. There are much larger clans. Uh, if you just watch YouTube videos, I mean, there's clans that, that, you know, that, that are 20, 30, 40, 50 people. And, the, and these are yeah. real massive. These are clans that, have, that were already in place, and now they have, they've transitioned to H1Z1. So I would be interested to see what their numbers are like, if they've seen a decline, especially yeah. being a lot of these bigger clans being multi-game clans. Like in our situation, when we all met around H1Z1, Besides yeah. you and I, everybody else just kind of met around H1Z1. So now that that's kind of in a weird spot, it's going to be interesting to see where the clan goes from there. And it would be interesting to see what the, what's going on with these larger clans uh, that have, you know, maybe Minecraft servers or Gary's Mod servers um, and are playing other games like that. So it would be interesting. You know, I think maybe that clans, I guess the deterrence from clans uh, would be... Uh, something would be like a large reason that you see this huge decline. It's just large clans aren't playing anymore. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing we've, I put out a plea last this past week saying any other clans that are of a decent size, will you please come to our server (laughs) because we've run out of people. And I mean, the people that we, we play against, I feel sorry for because a lot of them aren't as large as us. And, they're the only people there, so it's like, where are we going to go? Exactly. I mean, it's we're going to go keep attacking those people, and that's not what they deserve. It's not their fault that they, you know, they maybe have five people, seven people, or something like that, and we've got twenty. It's just we don't have anyone else to go get. We've blown up almost every base on the on the server. So, you know, I know that we have had one clan move to our server. Of course, we haven't been playing the last couple of days, and I mean, if you haven't seen yet, there is going to be a wipe here coming up in a couple days. So this may be a fresh start. I'm hoping that after the wipe, that there's just a lot of people that come back to the game. Um, I don't know that that we're still going to have the same problems with base building and we're going to have to be very strict on the base building because whoever sets that platform has to be online to do any base building. Yeah. And this is something that I guess you, uh, so prior to, us moving to our current location. We were on Humperdinck Gorge, and I think we had a pretty good control over that base, Brian. You pretty much placed everything. Actually, I'm 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 almost certain that you placed everything on Humperdinck, yeah. Besides the doors, you did almost everything else, and and if not yes. all the doors, almost all of the doors, and it worked yeah. really well. We moved to our new base. People got a little antsy, and they decided that they were going to start placing their own stuff. Hey, oh, well, I've got a deck foundation, and and oh, hey, well, I've got stairs, and everybody started placing their own things. And it really kind of screwed us. We were blowing up our own structures at one point to try to expand our base because just regular clan members were just placing stuff. Who placed this door? The person isn't on for three days. We can't get anything done. And we're really having a problem with that now Um, because, like you said, Brian, you're trying to place stuff on our foundation and you didn't place it. Yeah. And so we've hit a point. I mean, someone – okay, so here's here's another issue. And – I'm a, I thought I was going to be a lot harsher about this, but I'm not as upset at the moment. <laughs> but, okay, so, so someone placed a deck foundation right outside of our base. And so all they have to do is put something and some steps on top of it, and they can walk right onto our top level. Normally, that wouldn't be a problem because all we'd have to do is blow up those steps, blow up the building below, place our own balls around the outside of it, you know, and as long as we maintain that they're going to have to do some decent amount of work to be able to get in there. I mean, we could even place things to where they wouldn't be able to place that upper structure unless they destroyed all of our things, right? That, because of the new change that they made where 
the per you can't place anything else on someone else's foundation unless they're in your group. We can't do anything with that deck foundation. We can't destroy it because deck foundations can't be destroyed, right? Um, and we can't we can't secure it. So we have this empty deck. Well, it's not empty, but that we have this deck foundation that somebody else placed down there. That whenever they feel like it, all they have to do is place, even if we destroyed everything on it, all they'd have to do is place one little building and a set of steps and they'd be right back in our base again. Yeah. And, and so there is no way, it's like, what's the point? There's nothing we can do about that thing. There's no way that we can say, hey, let's destroy this no matter of resources that we can use to do anything about it. And so it's just, it's highly annoying that they have not thought this through enough. And obviously, clans and base building is one of their last priorities right now. But that's one of the most frustrating because those are some of the only people still playing. Well, and I think we are. I mean, I think you've got the dedicated group of people are the people playing in a group. I couldn't imagine right now, Brian, I don't think you would either. I can't imagine being a single player, maybe playing with one or two friends and still playing this game right now. A anybody that I talk to, uh, like my closer friends that play this game that only played in groups of one or two, they're, they haven't played H1Z1 in, 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 in patches. They, they don't even bother playing it anymore. Yeah. Because for them, you know, at least with us, we've got structure. We can get stuff done so fast. Like, oh, we need ammo. We can send 10 people out to go get ammo. And it, it's, a pretty, yeah. it's a pretty easy thing to overcome. Same thing with cars. Because uh, we have the numbers, we can get stuff done in, an, in obviously a much quicker time than everybody else. But that's why we're still playing the game. Is because when Man. we get screwed by hackers and they steal all of our stuff, it's 45 minutes to being close to where we were again. It's just this well, never-ending cycle. See, but the problem is, is this time someone came in, they blew all, blew all of our doors off, which mm -hmm. is totally legitimate. I mean, they came in a legitimate way. It's not their fault that we're running into this problem. It's the, it's the fault of Daybreak that they've made it to where there's no way for us to recover from this. Well, the, the we, thing this we is can't even place the doors again because the person who, who placed the doors doesn't come online very often. So there, we can't even place doors on our rooms anymore. Well, this is a temp this is a temporary thing. They're trying to implement this so to to get it so that well, you can't glitch like Brian, like we used to do. We used to glitch over the gate. We'd build a ta a pyramid of people over the gate, and then we'd place a stair foundation inside that base, and then jump over the wall, steal all their stuff, and and run away. That's what the, that's what I think this is an implementation of trying to deal with people glitching into bases, or you know, in our case, building a pyramid to get into the base, then placing stairs and jumping over the wall. That's what I think this is. But like you said, you can't play stairs now. What's going to happen? Wh this is what I don't understand. What's going to happen on this player wipe? I are we going to be able to place anything anymore? Because you're you're going to have to re get your name on those servers. So are, how is that? How is the permissions well, going to okay. work with the objects? Okay. So what? I mean, what, okay. So everything's going to be fresh, right? Just the players. So, no, uh, everything. So all of our base is going to be gone. Oh, this is a complete server wipe. This is a server wipe. Oh, not okay. Just player wipe. I thought this was a player wipe. Nope. So this is going to be the whole thing. Um, the, the whole thing is going to be gone. And so that, that I'm cool with. But the thing is, is now, we, okay, so I've thought this through, how we're going to have to defend against someone building all of just Because if they can place any platform outside of our base, they can get in. Any platform close enough to our base. And so the only way that you can do it is by littering around your, your base objects that can't be destroyed, just just having them sitting out there so that they can't put a platform outside. So are we just going to have to place furnaces around, like, the outside of our base? Just, like, temporarily? To, to so, I mean, we're going to have to put, like, those green... I, I think those green shacks can't be destroyed. It's like we're going to have to just sit those, sit those every however many feet hmm. just to get it... So that, and that's... I mean... Not that it's all about looks, but imagine every single base having to do that. It's going to look horrible. Yeah. It's like, why don't they think these things through to say, okay, well, if you want to be able to secure around, let's make it so that there's things that we can put around and defend. I just, it is a mess. And then, you know, we built this huge, huge base that we started on. And now, you know, we've not worked on it anymore, of course. When it's three, six, uh, it's eight, um, tamper grounds around the outside. Okay. And then it's an open center area and there are gates or there's walls all the way around the whole thing. 
Okay. And so it's just a, a massive base. And so we built this and word got around, all the hackers start talking about, hey, this really cool base is being built. And so they start coming and clipping through the walls just to come in and look. Yeah, so here. And so we're, we're, we're there sitting and building things and they're just constantly clipping through the walls and, and harassing. It's not, like some of them ended up being nice and talking to us and actually gathering materials for us, but it kind of takes the damper out of things when you know, the first time they come through, they come and kill you all. And then, then you have to put up with them sitting there the whole time. So this is a picture uh, Musty just submitted in chat. This is the base that we're talking about, uh, or Brian that Brian is talking about. And you can see the scale of it. Um, interesting thing in chat I just saw. Uh, uh, Mick Lovin is saying, this uh, player slash server wipe is, a, is bad news. Building is totally screwed, and they need to revert to old building rules uh, until they come up with a new system. Are we going to be able to get build a new base with this system? Like, is it just going to be completely broken to the point where it's like, is it even worth building a base until there's new build rules? Like, it, seriously, are we going to invest the time into a base like we did on our old one and just have somebody come and place a tampered ground and stairs and just jump over all of our walls? I mean, what are we supposed to do? Uh, yeah, yes. And that's the, okay, so what the problem is, is first of all, we're going to have to go to kind of what we originally did, one builder. I mean, yeah. no matter what, one builder. And if anyone wants to make any improvements on the base, you need that to one it. person has to be there. And then I don't know what we're going to do yet about people being able to just jump over walls whenever they want unless you litter things around the base. Um, that wasn't Before, that wasn't as much of a problem. If someone griefed you with a platform, you could go and secure it. You know, mm -hmm. that it would still, they should make it so you can destroy it. They need to think things through from beginning to end. First of all, the first thing they need to implement is a clan system because we want to make it so that anyone in the clan can make modifications to the base. So step one, rather than doing all these other things they're doing, clan system. You put in a clan system and then you can say, all right, you want to restrict who can build on a platform. Make it so that you can say, all right, people in the clan can do this or people with this rank in the clan can do this. Yeah. Then, okay, that locks that down. Then you also need to make sure that people can destroy platforms because if people can just place platforms anywhere because they know they can never be destroyed, they can grief you with those. So it's like, why are they not destroying, making it so you can destroy a platform because that would solve our problem as well. So like little things like this are the things that they need to be doing first. And I, it just confuses me why this is what it seems like that the whole clan system the thing that's really bringing people into the game and keeping them there is their last priority yeah and uh so h1z1 is actually in the chat right now the official uh account and they're saying that there will be new build rules with this patch um and then once the official patch notes are released they'll be in there so hopefully there are some improvements in this patch that will kind of deal with some of the problems that we're dealing with right now hopefully and then okay. that'll make it so and, that we can do stuff. And see, for me, that's totally cool. I mean, if they can get it to where that takes care of that problem, because that's been our, our biggest thing of when we run into these these roadblocks, they're things that, okay, well, there's a no way for us to work around this without starting over. Uh, you know, if, we, if we're going to spend all of this time on that new base. Hey, Brian, Brian, let me cut you off here. Your Skype is totally gone to crap. Um, right, I'm going to recall you. Yeah, so, uh, so, but. Essentially, what Brian is saying is, you know, I feel like every single, I guess, I think it's a clan as a whole, we feel like every single time that we take some steps forward, we just get punched right back. And in this case, it's just this constant, you know, we build, we make an improvement or we do something like that, and somebody else builds something next to us. Or, um, you know, hackers, like Brian was saying, hackers are no clipping into the base and killing us. It's like every time we take a step forward, you know, we just keep, we just keep going back. Um, so let's so say we got Brian back here. Yeah, I'm watching to see how my uh, yeah, it's still the connection is still still, a it's still not great quality. Yeah, the quality is still not great. Gotta love Skype. Yeah. Well, uh, so you actually understand me though, or is it pretty? It's pretty bad. I'm gonna be honest right. with you. All right, how was that? Uh, it should hopefully clear up. Um, All right, so we'll mute my video for a little bit. We'll see the audio. Yeah. So then let's, if that's the case, then let's. So let's get right into this. Um, 
let's let's get right into this stuff then. So there's going to be a patch this Thursday, uh, and and the wording is uh, a pretty sizable patch. Uh, so what's going to be implemented in this patch? There's going to be the new female model is actually rolling out now. It will be available because um, it's a player and a server wipe. When you create your character, it's going to I would assume prompt you if you're a male or a female, and it'll let you select that model. Steam Marketplace will be rolling out as well, so we'll be able to see some of the marketplace stuff uh, implemented. First person battle royale, this is something that's been talked about for a little while, uh, but that's going to be an official game mode now, so uh, I think I would hope that when you queue up, you'll get an option if you want to queue up into regular or if you want to queue up into first person BR. Um, and this is just an unofficial off of Reddit, so it's not everything that's going to be in the patch, but everybody that uh, has an account will get a Daybreak uh, t-shirt in game and it's going to be their new Daybreak game logo, which we showed you a little bit ago. Um, and this is uh, to you know celebrate the release of their new site and their logo. Uh, there's going to be uh, some crafting elements, and uh, they just say UI goodness. So not sure what UI they're tweaking. Maybe it's going to be the clan system UI. Maybe it's just going to be regular launcher UIs uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and they'll figure that out, uh, and we'll see for that as well once the official patch notes are out. Um, but... Right now, this stuff is not on the test server. It should be on the test server um, a little bit later. Uh, they say either tonight or tomorrow, if you're watching the show live uh, on a Tuesday. So that'll be out on the test server, um, and then we'll hopefully be able to get in there. Now, it's kind of interesting. I would have hoped that this would have been on the test server a little bit earlier. Because it seems so, like... It seems you know like... How, early they're, how er much earlier are they putting these things on the test server? Because it seems like... Uh, no set like this is only a week out. You know, I haven't seen anything where they well, say. Oh. I mean, in this case, they're going to put this patch on the test server either tonight or tomorrow. But if there's any big bugs come tomorrow, I mean, it's kind of it's it's kind of late. I would think. I'm not. I, I don't know. It just seems like tomorrow there, you're. It's it's a little bit late to do that. Um, and of course, they haven't had the test servers forever, so. Once the test server, once they've gotten to the to the swing of using these test servers, then and H one Z one is confirming that chat. Once they get into the swing of actually using these test servers, I think we'll see, you know, that the test servers are out a week in advance, um, because they're still brand new and it's still stuff that they're working on. Um, so all that stuff is is going to be implemented in this patch. Now there was a quick, there was a hot fix. Uh, we, we lost Brian for a few minutes, but we'll get him back. There was a hot fix on Saturday morning. This was to address some of the issues in the, in last Thursday's patch. This was a huge, there was a lot of problems with the last Thursday patch. Let me say that. Um, a, a whole lot of problems. So this patch was, this was a Saturday morning patch, uh, 2 AM. And some of the things that they fixed, uh, were the doors and locks, um, uh, are now, were now fixed and they were supposed to be working as intended, which was a huge problem. People were locked out of bases. It was it was just not a good sign. Doors weren't opening. Um, so we, our clan, we essentially just had clan members locked out of our base for two days at a time where they just weren't being able to do anything. But that's all fixed now. Um, there was a, I guess there was a bug in PVE where zombies were, wouldn't attack you. So I guess the PVE was just kind of a free for all because uh, zombies couldn't attack you. There's been, a, uh, they fixed the issue where the B box collision. Um, and there's something with the interactions have been fixed with that. And there was a problem with the vehicle turbos and that was also fixed. Um, so that was the Saturday morning hot fix, which was, uh, which was definitely much needed because there was a lot of game breaking issues in that, but it was nice because that, you know, that thing came out so quick. The patch came out Thursday morning and it was about, you know, I guess two days before they were able to roll it out again. Um, but that was the Saturday morning patch. And, you know, as much crap as everybody's is giving Daybreak for, for, you know, for them not doing stuff, when they do these Saturday patches, this is a group of developers working on a Saturday. Like, yeah, you know, it may be, um, you know, something that they created, but at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, this is people working on a Saturday up at two o'clock Eastern and doing all and, and doing all these updates. So you know, th it, they could easily say, "Oh, Thursday patch. Well, it looks like we're going to be out of the office Saturday and, and Sunday. We'll hopefully get it fi fixed by next Tuesday." Uh, no, but they they rolled out that hot fix right away. So we have to give them some praise for that. Uh, that was definitely something that was much needed. There was a lot of game breaking issues, and it was something that was definitely much needed and something that they had to do. 
and they did do it. So, you know, the, the speediness is there. Um, you know, obviously, it would be great if the issues weren't there in the first place, but even though the issues were there and, and prevalent, they ironed those out, and it only took two days. Um, yeah, and, they, and, and H1C was saying, chat, lots of long nights since launch. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. They're not clocking out and saying, oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll see you Tuesday. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, uh, a fix out by then. They're figuring this stuff out. Uh, and they're getting it done, so you know we got to give them we got to give them something for that. So let's talk about April twenty third. Um, the the that is done. The April twenty third patch is done, uh, and that and that's official. Some of the big problems we just talked about. Definitely the biggest thing was the base uh, things with the door. Um, essentially, what this it wouldn't allow you interact with doors. I believe it was unless you placed them. So basically what would be happening is unless you placed a door, you couldn't interact with the door. So we had clan members that were locked inside the base, and we had clan members that were locked outside the base. And this was just total chaos for us. Our numbers declined rapidly Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday because people just were locking in realizing they couldn't get on and they were just going and playing other stuff, um, which was definitely a problem uh, for them. And, uh, you know, something that even I noticed while when I logged in, I tried to interact. I, I don't even think anybody else was on. I tried interacting with uh, I, uh, with the door or something like that, and it wouldn't even let me. And, uh, and then I just uh, logged right back out. Um, so not, you know, that was obviously a huge issue, uh, but that was fixed right away. Uh, so that's pretty much the repercussions or I guess the, the final, uh, I guess, what happened with the April 23rd patch. We have Brian back. Hey, Brian. Hey, it's. It sounds kind of bad, but we'll see if it straightens out here. Yeah, it's still pretty awful. If you want to just hop on TeamSpeak or something, maybe that we could just do that. Okay, I'll jump in there and then we'll... Yeah, we'll figure something out with that. Um, sorry about these technical problems here, trying to, to trying to get out to all these things sorted out during the show. Um, let's see. Okay, so there we go. We'll wait for Brian in here. Um, so that was the April 23rd. Now we can take a look at April 30th. This is uh, what's going to be coming out uh, Thursday. This is Thursday, uh, and we just talked about some of the other things. The off-roader interior will be updated with that. So the off-roader will have a higher resolution interior. We've seen this do. We've seen them do this on a lot of cars. Uh, the police car has a higher interior. Or uh, I guess a, a updated high res, res interior. interior. Yeah, um, the off roader has that, or not the off roader. The police car and the truck have that. The off roader is getting that now. So we're seeing all of these cars slowly transition over to this high res interior, uh, which if you play in first person, I don't know who drives in first person. It's extremely complicated. Um, but well, if you drive in first person, we discussed that later they're going to be making it most likely that the first person servers are going to be forced to it. So uh, it, maybe they're waiting to force the first person in the in the actual first person servers and the first person BR that they're getting ready to implement. Mm -hmm. so they probably want to get all those nice looking interiors first before they force people to see those. Now that's something that's interesting in the first person battle royale. They haven't said if um, if everything is going to be forced first person. Now that the, I guess the car interiors are all updated, I would imagine you're not even going to be able to go in third person at all. Uh, but they may give you the option with driving, because driving is a little weird in first person, I must say. Like, shooting in first person is, is, I think, the way to go, but driving in first person, you can't see anything. Um, you, you're pretty much just, you can see in front of you, and that's about it. Uh, so we're going to have to see what they decide to do with the first person uh, driving for uh, for the first person only battle royale mode yeah and i think that uh, that'll be interesting to see if they if they implement that right off the start because that's something they haven't really done uh, you know they and none of the other first person servers are, are forcing that first person in the car so maybe this is where they're actually going to force it in the brs for the first time for them to be a good way because it is a new totally new thing so people aren't expecting anything yeah, um, and then yeah, I talked about it a little bit before, but the marketplace is going to allow you to buy, sell, uh, and trade items on Steam through the Steam marketplace, so that'll be integrated with Steam, and all this stuff will go through there. Um, and that's pretty much all they've said for the April 30th update. Now, we did hear that there's going to be some base building, uh, 
things that are going to be changed, some new rules for base building. Uh, we're not sure what those are yet, but we will be uh, figuring those out as the patch rolls out and as the test servers go up uh, as well. So that's the April 30th patch. Um, Brian, something interesting. We talked about it last week. We talked about players online. And last week, around this time, there were almost 10,000 people playing the game. It was 9,742 people were playing the game uh, similarly at this time uh, last week. Right now, there is just over 8,000 people playing. There's 8,082 people currently playing the game right now. And today's peak um, was was almost 10,000, a little lower yeah, than 10,000. Yeah, just 000. under 10,000. Um, but these numbers are, if, if we're comparing these numbers, these are down almost seven or 800 players, um, depending, uh, the, the peak is down about uh, 900 players or so, uh, but the players online is down dramatically. It's down almost 2,000 yeah. players. Cur now, we do always see a spike after the, after the wipes. And so it'll be interesting to see, because if you look at the players in the last year, part of the graph, um, you can see that it's consistently gone down and then there's always a jump up. So last time they did some sort of a wipe with new content, it went, it was down at the lowest times, 13,000, um, around those times it was peaking up to about 20,000 players. And then it went up to 23,000 players at the peak, um, it really, it didn't go down below for a little, you know, for a period of time. It didn't go down, to go down below 20,000. But then after, like, say, maybe a week or so, it dropped down to then there was 10,000, you know, a max of 15,000 people on. So they lost almost in a week's time, uh, two weeks' time, they lost almost half. I mean, they went from about 25,000 down to about 15,000 peaks yeah now i mean at this point uh, uh, brian i think you could elaborate a little bit more on this but our group has been pretty much just playing battle royale because the people have built so close to our base our our, ma our previous main base that there was nothing to even do it was just this this constant struggle to just you get anything productive done and these people just walk right into the base and there's nothing we can do about it because we can't blow up the foundations um, or anything like that. Yeah. And, and yeah, because of these frustrations of not being able to, well, okay, first of all, there's been a lot of griping about how much, um, how much, uh, uh, materials you can get for base rating. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that you can make so much ethanol and, and carry it so easily, you know, when you carry the corn and you carry the different materials needed to make ethanol, you can fit thousands worth of ethanol inside of your your bag and that's when, something that i i don't like the ethanol thing they could just take the ethanol out of the game right now and i would be okay with it base rating used to be something that that you had to work for base rating right now you don't have to work for it at all like you just show up and you get some corn and you you can blow you can blow up an entire base in seconds the entire base will be gone if in our case our whole under part was just a corn farm we could go to any base we wanted, and we did. We went to any base on our server. We'd hop in our car with just sometimes two people, go into a base or go to a base that we wanted, blow up the front gate, blow up some other structures, take anything we wanted, load it up into a car, and drive back. It was this just constant back and forth, getting whatever we wanted. And 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 at this point right now, it's like why even bother building a base? It's just, there's no point. You build the base, well, and, that, and, 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 and it's just instantly blown up. Yeah, I think they really need to focus on on nerfing the the base rating things. I mean, as people that, that rate a ton, it, you know, when we're to the point of this is just too easy, uh, I think that that's where they really need to say, say, okay, you know, the people that are actually raiding are saying this needs to be harder because for us, we've run out of the fact that we've run out of, of bases to raid is a bad thing. They need to make it to where maybe we, it's a, a task to raid one base a day or one base an hour. I mean, not Brian, 10 bases an I mean, hour. It's not even like, it's not even like we've run out of base to raid. We've run, we've run out of things to do. Like there's just nothing. What, what are we left to do? 
Well, and, and that's the thing that what we were left to do was to build, just mess around with building gigantic bases. But then as soon as they made a change, they, they, you know, then they took that ability to away. And then, you know, that's where the point of everybody's playing battle, battle royale, because then what do you do? If you can't build a base and you, and there's nobody to kill, what do you, what do you go and do at that point? Exactly. Um, now let's do a little speculation on this, Brian. They're going to do this patch Thursday and it's going to be a complete wipe. What numbers do you think we're going to see this time next week? I, I think it's probably going to peak to about 20,000. You think 20,000 for next I week? I think it's going to go up because I think it's going to double where we're at right now. That seems to be the trend. It will go down. Like when you hit a low, a wipe happens, new content happens. It, it jumps up 10,000 people. Okay. So I'm kind of guessing that it's going to go to 20,000 people no on at a time, forward. which will be... I mean, on our server, we'll see a lot more people. The people at the top of the list seem to see a lot more people. Yeah. Um, so that'll be, that's interesting. I think it's going to be a lot less than that. I think that there are so many people. I'm, I'm more in line with Musty. He says 10K. I'm more on the line with that. Um, well, I mean, that's where we're at right now. But here's the thing. There are so many people that have such a bad taste in their mouth from this game. Are they even going to bother trying to get back into it for one patch? Like there's just so I think we'll many see a people, lot of people that are like turning off. Create their female characters. They're going to create um, their characters and they're going to leave. They are not going to stay and play. There's not going to be any base for them to play at. They're going to have to work to get their stuff. I honestly just but see don't for me see... that's the fun part. That's the that's part the fun that part for you. But we have people in our clan that just log in, play, and then leave. And I'm sometimes guilty of that myself. I log in, I don't feel like doing anything. I just want there to be something to do when I log in. And yeah. in this case, I think what's, we're going to see a little bit of this time where people are logging in. There's not going to be a base there because it's brand new player. They're going to wait two or three days, wait till we've got our bases built, and then maybe people will start logging back in. But I think so many people at this point right now uh, have such just a bad taste in their mouth. You know, they've seen patch and wipe after wipe, and it's just this. It's just I guess they feel like they're not going anywhere. Um, so well, I mean, and that's the. I know you hear this a ton of times. This is alpha, though. I mean, oh, of course it's alpha. Yeah, this th is to that, be I mean, expected. This, the, I expect wipes. I expect these things to happen and, and these things to be ironed out. You know, that is part of what we sign up for when we do this. And, you know, I know everyone says that on Reddit. That's, that's, a, that's just something they say. I understand that part. And, and so the whole wipe thing. But, you know, when you, I think what gets people frustrated and when they feel like certain times when changes are made, they get a couple steps backwards. Yeah. So, like, you know, okay, good. You put in stuff for base rating. It's overboard. Okay. You know, rather than toning back the things for base rating, they make another change, which then breaks base building. You know, it's just the people are wanting it to where, okay, there's constant improvement. And when you have a week, and I mean, this is realistically a week's, you know, some of these things happen in a week yeah. to where people are just so mad they don't log in again. And it's only something that's been going on for a couple of days. But you know, the, the people always want it to be to where they always feel like, okay, we're no better off th today found. than we were seven days ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we sit, we sit here and, and we criticize and like Brian keeps saying, and the, and the point that needs to be pounded home time and time again is this is alpha. It, th this is an alpha game. We can complain as much as we'd like, but this is alpha. I mean, Right, Brian. I mean, this this is an alpha game. Like we we can you sign every time you click it with beta sometimes you click and... continue every single time you launch the game and it says this game is an alpha. There's going to be problems. That yeah. you click continue every time, and I'm guilty of this, and I know you are too, Brian. We like we exp we think that this game is in beta. We think that this game is ready to be released, and it's not. Yeah. And we're criticized, and, and uh, I feel like you know week in and week out. You look on Reddit, it's just the same crappy criticisms week in and week out. This game, I mean, look at what DayZ did, the standalone. That game, that game yeah. sucked. They didn't do, I guess you could say he, the guy that was developing it, didn't do anything for months. It was just the same, same static game, a few little changes here, a few little changes there. This game is an alpha, and you know, from what it was day one to what it is now is astonishing for an alpha yeah. game, right? Yeah, and, and that's... That's the thing I always want to make sure that I don't go too far in criticism, criticism, just because there's so much going into this. But, and that's where 
I get frustrated and I'm not necessarily mad that things aren't being made. And I think a lot of people don't get, aren't mad that content's being put in there, even if it doesn't work right. It's more of, I really think there needs to be a cohesive step forward for their, their whole programming team and their design team. I, I, I want to feel like that they see some sort of a, a goal in their mind of exactly what they want this to be and that that is what they're striving for. And I, and I, sometimes wonder if they're if they shouldn't have used reddit first of all as something to to give feedback on this game because they get so many mixed messages of what people want you'll never get two people saying the same thing and so it's hard for them to judge a nice cohesive goal when they're when they're looking at reddit i just i want someone at that company that says here's exactly what we want and then everybody has to, to step in line and do that. Because I feel like when they say, oh, we implemented this because it's what people wanted, later we usually find that that's not what people wanted or you know, they, they, they think it's a cool idea. Like the base, base rating, right now I'd rather have them turn it off. That, personally, that would make me happier yeah. so if base rating was totally turned off for now. So Okay, so you said base rating turn off. Explain how would you, how would you would turn base rating off. Like wh what, would you, what would you get rid of or would you just make explosions not blow up? What would you do? If you could do yeah, anything just, right now to turn off base rating, what would you do? Okay, first of all, I would make it so that a player has the ability who created an item has the ability to remove an item and make it so that... Now, the, the danger of this is... But we're strictly talking people will base rating. You. Base rating. The, the problem is, is, is there's a big risk of you, if you turn off base rating, and this is probably what they're viewing. If you turn off base rating, then griefing becomes a major problem because we complain that we can't destroy that platform outside. If they could come up with a way that it would take us so much resources to destroy it, then you know, then it wouldn't be worth it. We, we'd have to be very dedicated to destroy that. Which, which is, we would which, be, and that's exactly what I was just going to say. We would be that if if they if they keep the same amount of ethanol in the game, but the ethanol doesn't do a fraction of the damage it does now, that would be fine because we would have to sit back as a group, have five or six people, and say, "All right, guys, this is our goal. We're going to blow up this structure outside of our base and put as many resources as we have online at a time to doing that." Yeah, and and that would be fine, but when yeah. it's you know, it wasn't. You know, maybe 15 ethanol away from blowing up uh, a structure and the main gate. 15 ethanol yeah. takes what? 10 it, minutes to get? I mean, you just, anyway, it's a corn. No, I mean, it, you can just get corn anywhere. Well, it's the problem the is, is, is we had like a thousand corn. We had a thousand um, just of each material. And, and you got to think one corn in one of each of those materials makes five ethanol. So that was 5,000 ethanol, and it takes about 40 ethanol to blow up a, a door, a, a gate. Is it really 40? Yes. And so if you imagine we had 5,000 that we could carry around at one time easily, and that, that, you know, that was 5,000 worth of ethanol that we could carry around and just go around anywhere in the bases and destroy so ferments it's three corn, three yeast, three purified water, and that would make five ethanol. So, so actually that was a thousand and something. It was equivalent of a thousand plus um, ethanol. Yeah, I mean that's crazy. Which still, I mean, imagine how many bases we could destroy we, when you only need. It, it's not even how many. You need a hundred or less to destroy almost everything inside well, the, of the, the base. Well, here's the thing. You said how many we could have. How many we did? Is, are there were there any bases left on our server that weren't new? Any anytime we would just be driving, be like, oh, there's a base over in B3. What would we do? We'd drive back to the base, grab ethanol, drive up there, and just blow up the door. Okay, so you know he's confirming my number, my original number. So three ethanol, three yeast, three purified water makes 15 ethanol. That's so ethanol. yeah, one corn equals five ethanol. So realistically, we had 5,000 ethanol that we could, we could carry around at any time, which we didn't even need. Because and, and, yeah, we didn't even need that. But but that's the thing is, Ferment says we blew up all the bases. Yeah, and that is true. We <laughs> ran out of bases to blow up on the server, and we are we were one of the higher population servers at, at one time. Yeah. So everybody was giving us crap a few weeks ago about hey, you know, you don't play in high pop server, you don't understand what it's like. You know, we don't, we don't, you don't understand that this is ridiculous. This is the real problem. We were a medium to high pop. Most of the times, high pop, the, you know, if it was a weekend, would be a high pop. Now, it's consistently a medium pop, right? 
I mean, does it even flick the high pop anymore? Or have we just drove everybody out? Well, I think we've driven almost everybody out to where we which don't even hit. Which is the same thing that happened on Walker Empire, which was our first server. We and, drove and so, everybody out. So H1Z1 in chat is saying that they are going to be altering this, uh, the ethanol in this quality of life patch that they're going to be doing. And did you talk about that when I was... Um, what, which, which one? That they're going to be doing a quality of life patch. I, no, I didn't talk about that yet. No, I, I did almost okay, everything else. Okay. So what, what they're doing is I think it's once a month and I'll have to find this post so we can put it in the notes, but they're, they're doing a quality of life patch that doesn't implement new things. It's not like a, a roadmap patch. It's just going to be going through and fixing things that are causing us stress in game, <laughs> like the ethanol, uh, maybe things with base building. So, I mean, for this type of a thing, that's an excellent idea because so many times if they get caught up on this roadmap to where they're constantly having to keep up with this roadmap, and this was kind of my fear in the beginning, if they're constantly having to keep up with a roadmap, they're, nev they're never going to catch up on some of these bugs and some of these things because they're, they're always going to be put in and we're running into this now. We're seeing that, oh, they implemented this new thing and it broke this past thing. And, and there's always something building up on top of the other. So this quality of life patch will be just an opportunity for them to take that week and say, all right, we're just going to fix some of these problems that are causing ha hassles in game. Whether it's something people are using to grief bases or the fact that it's so easy to blow up everyone's bases um, and uh, yeah, Alcunian in uh, chat just put the link in there for us. But that's going to be coming up here um, next week. And this was posted about an hour ago um, that, yeah, they're going to be doing this. It says not every bug has a quick fix. And so um, you know, we're always expecting, we like we look at the base building, oh, you just need to reverse it. This is where our, I, I, I always have to, think to myself, well, is my knee-jerk reaction always the best reaction? You know, I say just reverse it, uh, you know, and maybe they're coming up with a way here. They're saying, okay, well, here's a way that we can truly fix this problem rather than just undoing the progress that we tried to make with that feature. The, this is essentially them just tying up loose ends once a month, which is what they need. This is where they're going to yeah. go in and say, all right, we've done what we can do with this. We were happy with how this system uh, operates. This is, we're going to tie the knot and it, we're done. This, this system is done, and I imagine, I imagine that they're going to have an internal checklist of all the systems that they're implementing, looking to implement, and they're going to, as these quality of lives are rolling by and they're, and they're tying up these knots, they're just going to be checking these things off. All right, base building is where we want it. The clan UI is where we want it, and it's just going to keep going down, and I think this is good. Because and like, they've got like that Brian, it, the SOE issue tracker as well. Yeah. I mean, that has a lot of bugs on there that people have been uh, complaining and they may not be game breaking bugs. That's the issue is the game breaking bugs are uh, bugs are not <laughs> <laughs> bugs. The, the game breaking breaking bugs are not the day breaking ones that bugs. They, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the ones that they had to, to fix immediately. You know, the, the, there's these ones that, that are just kind of like, as they said, quality of life. They're ones that aren't game breaking, but they still need to be fixed. And so there's a whole list of those that don't get put to the top of the list on the SOE issue tracker. And so this is a perfect opportunity for them to take some of those things like, hey, this, this thing doesn't render right. Or, or you know, remember how we, I think you talked about it, we couldn't go into the doors. You'd open, once they implemented that patch that made it so that you couldn't clip into a room, then all of a sudden we were getting stuck outside of our doors, brugs. Uh, yeah, start a new hashtag. Um, <laughs> Daybreak brugs. Uh, yeah, you start saying some of these er words too much, and it's like you can't get the words out. But yeah, I, I think you know we found that to where okay, if you went back and forth, logged out, things like that, you could eventually get in the room. That was just a huge annoyance. I wouldn't. I'd rather have them not roll back the uh, the no clipping b uh, fix and and deal with that. But that's something they eventually need to get to. Yeah. Um, so this quality of life stuff is going to be good. Uh, like without a doubt, this this is much, much needed, uh, and I think this is just like I said, going to top a lot of loose ends and get a lot of systems done so that people can move on to other things uh, and keep the flow uh, with the you know the new stuff flowing. Hey, did you cover the uh, the roadmap? Uh, yeah, I well, yeah I went okay. over the roadmap. I, uh, the, okay, I just want to make sure you yeah, covered. Well, I went over the went over the Reddit post and the roadmap because they both had like two different things on them. 
Uh, okay. But, but those are all covered. So we're all covered for the 30th. Um, that's going to be a complete wipe. And it was funny. We were saying how, or I think I was saying how people are just going to log in and not play. Even Musty in chat said he's just going to log in and get his name. I'm going to do the same thing first thing in the morning. I'm just going to log in, get my name on the server, and log back out. Um, yeah. Now, are we going to – this is something interesting. We're going to talk about this again, Brian. Are we going to switch servers? I mean, uh, do we stay on our current server? Is this going to – is? I feel like every server we go to, we we just we desolate. We we just like drop a nuke on every server, and we're like, yeah, hey, uh, see you later, everybody. Unless you want to deal with a clan of twenty people with seven cars and you know a billion ethanol. So I, I really think we need to stick with this server first of all because I did put that plea out there for other clans, and there are probably some clans that are saying, when the next wipe wipe happens, that's when we're going to move, because we did have one clan move already. Um, and of course, they're just getting started and then a wipe's happening here immediately. But I, I think that some of these other clans that have been considering don't want, didn't want to have to start over fresh, you know, and, but this is an opportunity for them to, they're going to be starting over fresh anyway, start out on our server. I would like to make it so that Bloodscorn, it, you know, has the most amount of clans on it. But if people don't want to play single, you know, if they want to play single player, maybe don't come to Blood Scorn. I mean, you can, but if you don't like the environment of having groups of five plus people running together all the time, um, you know, perhaps that's that's not the server for you. I, it's, I'm not saying it's to the, going to be that point after this wipe, but that's what I would like to to get to, to where it's known as the clan server, you know, and and people will kind of stake out their territories. You know, this is our area. That's your area you run a risk when you run through our area. You're um, saying people will flock, they will migrate to our server. I, I want clans to migrate to our yeah. server, yes. We got we got a lot of threats in chat right now. People saying come yeah, people say come to our here. server. It's funny. Well, and, I, and it's funny how people say that. You know, we've come to servers, but we have run out every single clan. I mean, I'd love you to love for you to be the one that we really find ourselves struggling with. Here's the thing. Like, Brian and I are not sitting here trying to be cocky bastards that are like, oh, yeah, we're the best clan that's ever played the game. It, it's, we just, they can't, how can you deal with a group of 20 people that play? We have, Ferment plays literally around the clock. He is Ferment, on all Ferment the time. sleeps two hours, and I don't know when he works, but then he's on the rest of the time. So, I mean, we we have so many dedicated people that just play almost around the clock that even if somebody's got more players, they almost can't compete because we've just got so many people that play all the time. And that's, like, the biggest problem. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing is, is we run through, and, I mean, we have a lot of pictures of us with 20-plus people sitting at the police station just hanging out taking pictures yeah we had one where we had about 10 uh, 15 people i think it was that were all sitting on top of a, a gas station and so i went down to take a picture and some random guy runs up with a gun not realizing there's 20 people sitting up on the gas station <laughs> and he shoots me in the head and i die because <laughs> i'm sitting there taking a picture and then all of a sudden all these people jump down and kill him <laughs> and it's just it, you how can you know, you, how can you compete yeah and and that's the thing is is the people that, and that's why we want these larger clans to come because it's not like we're trying to run everyone off the server. Yeah, so that's so here, that is not our goal. Yeah, here's just one picture. I mean, this isn't as big of a group. Um, this is only like nine people or whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that that's what we do. That, that's like an average group size for us. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, is we have, I mean, and that, that's been lately because there's been less people on lately. Um, and, you know, so that's the issue is, is with less people on overall, um, you know, we have a lot of times where we'll have 10 people in, in, in playing on uh, TeamSpeak. Now, because of how broken things are, not all of those people are in the regular game. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I think that a lot of people, once the, once the server wipe happens, I think we'll see our numbers come up. Um, and then once we have people to actually go and fight against, um, you know, and then if they fix some of the clan, or not the clan system, but the base building and base raiding techniques, I, I think that'll make a lot of people come back because, you know, that won't be as much of a, uh, you know, either there's nothing left to do and we're sitting there saying, okay, what do you want to do now? We've just raided every, you know, the, the whole left, one base we found today. <laughs> that wasn't rated already. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Now, one quick thing here, Brian. Uh, there's going to be a pre-patch live stream tomorrow. Uh, at oh, normal, did they announce that? Yeah, at their normal time, 4 o'clock. They just threw it in our chat there. Um, okay. So the 4 o'clock uh, Pacific tomorrow, 4 p.m. Pacific tomorrow, they'll be doing their typical uh, pre-patch live stream. Well, they'll go over some of their changes. You know, it, I like that. I, I'm not the biggest fan of the pre-patch live stream. I, I don't know why. I there's just something about it that bugs me a little bit. Well, they, but I they like need, it because they it's... They need more structure to it, in my mind. The one thing I like, though, is that it's a, there's a personality there. Like, you're you're getting personality from the people that are on. Like, you're getting Adam's personality from playing the game. Like, there's this, this back-and-forth banter that you get from... Obviously, you can see the two people that work together that are friends and that are, you know, cooperating on building this game. You, and that's something you don't necessarily see in all the other stuff. Right, you just see a lot of this like scripted, and I don't mean scripted in the sense it's actually scripted, but this like you know scripted text, and you know we're just gonna try to get this point across, and we're gonna nail this point home. But you get a lot of this off off the cuff banter, similar to what you see on this show, um, yeah. and you get that with the pre patch live stream. So it's nice to see that you get the devs' personality, you meet them, and it's like you you like get more comfortable with these people over time. So uh, that'll be there tomorrow four o'clock. So oh, the other so, thing. Well, is they need to bring back those QA live streams. The one big yeah, one that they did that, with everybody, that was great. I mean, that was that was so awesome. They had everybody in the same room. Any question that was asked in chat, any there was somebody qualified in that room to answer it. So yeah. that's um, that's what they need to do. Well, and I think last time, you know, it was their first one. I think if they could come up with kind of like what we did when we had them on, have here's some questions that we would like to ask you know they can get people in the community to ask these questions and then maybe give their their people that are going to be asked the question a heads up of hey you're going to be asked about this you're going to be asked about this because it's not that i don't i'm not looking to corner people or to surprise them um you know and have them say something that's not totally correct or yeah you know not that i'd rather have here's what's really going to happen and so I think if they could come up with a little more structure in that to, to where they have a list of what they know is going to be asked and not a filtered list, maybe even ask something that, if, you know, at least ask it and say, hey, you know, we can't give you that information. Not, not go through and just make it totally cleaned up. Hey, here's, here's what we want to push off to you guys as marketing. But take those questions as long as they're not troll questions and get them to those developers and then have them answer them in the way that there is most accurate because I think last time it seemed like they didn't know what questions were coming up. Yeah. And so I, I think that if they would have had, and they didn't, weren't always prepped to give a good answer and I'd rather have a good answer that's as accurate as possible with as much information as possible. And that would make the QA time for me much more fulfilling. Yeah. So I, w I would agree with you hundred percent there. A little more structure to that system would go a long way, but th those are key because most of and we, Brian, we experienced this as well. And I know we got a lot of criticism for it, but the questions that we wanted to ask, you know, the right people weren't there for that. And that's just, you know, when that's why you need a whole dev team there, right? Because specific questions. What, what is going yeah. on with the, uh, the environment system, with the weather system? Adam has no clue what's going on with the weather system. Like, you need the guy that's working on the weather system on there to talk about, yeah. where, you know, where the progress is. And that's why those big QA streams are the best. Um, or, you know, people want to ask questions like, you know, when are you going to start doing server side checks for Anna hacks? Right. And those guys aren't going to know because that's just, that's not what they do. Exactly. <laughs> and so that's where the, you know, the whoever's in charge of that particular area, that's who they need to ask. And, and to, and so I think that if they could get it to where those Q and A's are more formed in that way, I think that they would get a lot more people and, and demanding that it happen more often. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying we want to see it again, but I don't know how how much the community has really been pushing it. Yeah. Uh, now, Brian, it's uh, it's time we do this segment uh, every week. It's it's your claim to fame. Yeah. Uh, it's tips of the week, and basically you're just going to uh, you're going to give us what you're going to give us a beginner tip and then an advanced tip. Yes. All I right. Actually, probably should label which one is which. All right. Well, here we go. It's time for tips of the week. All right, so our beginner tip this week is that it's really important for someone to learn 
the bullet drop for each gun that they're using. And these two, I could have switched these back and forth kind of as a beginner and advanced because I think these are not only important for beginners but also for advanced people because a lot of people ignore this or, or they maybe avoid certain weapons because they don't know the bullet drop. And so uh, Ferment had made a, a thing for us that showed on a 308 how much bullet drop. And that's where a 308 is where it really comes into play. Of course, they're changing that every once in a while as they tweak these guns. And like with a shotgun, there's not necessarily bullet drop. Um, but you, you've really got to learn the bullet drop and the accuracy of if it is a shotgun, how far away can you shoot that and legitimately do damage to where that's the weapon of choice. Um, with an AR, how far away is it accurate before the spread becomes too large and you're not hitting them enough times? Um, is there a bullet drop at a certain distance with AR? So I think it's really important that as you start to play this game, and you come across these bullets, maybe not hoard the bullets because people will hoard bullets as much as they can and they never end up usually shooting them because they get killed. So maybe take an opportunity to take some shooting lessons. Uh, one thing that I did when I first started is I went to a brick wall where I could see, even, just even with the bows and arrows, I would go and I would shoot an arrow at a point in, and I was learning the difference between, at that time, first person and third person. And I would see where the arrow hit. But what you can do now is, it, let's say if you're starting out with the drop of an arrow, is go to, go to a, a wall, shoot an arrow, see where it hits compared to where you're aiming. Back up about 10, 20 feet, shoot it again. And start to learn, even with, with the arrows, what that drop is, because that's gonna make a huge difference um, when you get into those stressful situations to where you don't have a chance to maybe shoot two, three, four times. You need to learn, you know, once you get to the more advanced levels with a 308, as someone's running away, you got to learn how much to lead them and how much to, to go above them for that bullet drop and gauge it so you can hit that person with as close to a headshot as possible. Um, and then for advanced tip, this is something that's so simple, but I think that a lot of people ignore it or you know they do it and, and don't realize that they're they're maybe not doing enough um, you need to wear similar skins that are different enough from someone else in because you gotta look at we don't have a ton of skins right now and so when you go into a br it's hard to differentiate yourself so last night we were wearing those bright yellow uh, golf pants that they have in there now that there aren't very many of it's a fairly rare skin and that gave us an opportunity because we, we all went into one area and that was one of the only things that kept us all from shooting each other is the fact that we were all wearing these bright yellow golf pants in a BR. And so if you're going to be going and going in a group in whether it's even BR or a regular, um, you'd be surprised, especially in BR, everybody has those blue helmets. So don't say I'm the guy in the blue helmet. Um, everybody has camo shirts. So don't say I'm the guy in the camo shirt. It's, I think it's really important for you to go and if you can find a skin that's the rarest skin that you have that is something that looks different enough from something else, skin your team in that, in that, that, that outfit and then that's what you're going to be using is, is when I see somebody coming up to me or two people that are next to each other maybe shooting each other, that way I can quickly pick out my teammate because there are no name tags in BR. There's nothing like in the regular that can tell you the difference between those two people if they're wearing the same thing. So it's really important to avoid. And I remember one of our very first podcasts where you shot me. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I was well, just going to bring that up. We're like we're like seventh and eighth in a battle royale. And I, Brian's like, I'm getting shot. And I turn around and there's like two guys. And I'm like, well, here we go. I just yeah, fired at one of them. Yeah. You know, it's a, this is something that now that they're getting more skins, and I think as they come up with more ways to – or more skins in these different packs that you have more ways to get these more unique skins. Mm -hmm. um, then you'll have an opportunity to get, here's what we wear when we go to BRs. Here's kind of our unique outfit because right now there's not necessarily a good unique outfit to wear. Um, and the golf pants at the minute is one of the more rare things, but hopefully I know on the rest of their, and this is not, this is going out of the tips of the week, but I know on the rest of their games, they have a place where you can submit art that can be implemented in games. 
And I'd really like to see that here in H1Z1. Make it so that you can, you can design a shirt or design something and actually have it get in game. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if think, that's something that they're not doing right now because it's an alpha. I think we talked about because, that last week, yeah. Yeah, I, that's something I would really like to see them actually put in because that would make it so that, because right now we're relying on so many of these people to put in this art. Like we're relying on Jimmy and, and whoever else to, to put in all of these little items. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, imagine if the community, community were able to do it. Exactly. Um, oh, Kuni in in chat says, you know, if they could do armbands or just anything like those little, those little things that you can say, all right, well, we're the ones wearing the bright green armbands with maybe a certain skin on the helmet. Little things like that, 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 that could be the thing that saves you in, in that little firefight that you don't have time to really communicate who's where. Yeah. Uh, so quickly, Brian, this was announced um, on Facebook a little while ago. Uh, I'm sure they put it on Twitter as well. But they're actually doing a daybreak uh, celebration for them releasing their new logo. And they're actually yeah. having a little contest. Uh, it's a sweepstake. So you can actually win um, a daybreak uh, hat. It, they're doing like beanies uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and it's, it's daybreakgames.votigo.com. Um, and basically you just have to be 18 years old. Um, and if you register between now and May 1st, you, uh, will be eligible and you can just get, um, it's, you can either get a baseball hat, uh, or, uh, a knit beanie, depending on what game you want. So you can go over there, uh, and sign up if you're interested in something like that. So there you go for daybreak, sign up and win a free hat or something. There is some swag that I was going to be showing off here. Um, let's I, do it. All right, so it's a little hard to land see. gun, yeah, land gun. I there once we there, can see. There we go. Land gun, uh, who was in here earlier, he said he had to go, but um, he sent me some different things. That one of these I might, I don't know, I might put it on my fish tank back there. Um, <laughs> Your wife would kill you. <laughs> I, I know. So um, that's why I contemplate. Worth it. it worth it. Land gun sent me some of these, and these are car decals. So you can stick them in your window, or you can stick them on the side of your car. Um, but this is the H1Z1 logo, and it's done in a nice material that is not going to deteriorate, um, that you can stick on the side of your car and not worry about it fading. And then he also sent me some extra stickers. Um, I think a Zelda one and ah, one you, for he a didn't send me, He didn't send me anything. Hey, um, and so what we're looking at doing is uh, we're going to be doing some raffles here soon. And I know... We, We've been so busy this week, we didn't do our, uh, we still didn't do our clan yeah, spotlight. You know, here's the thing the clan spotlight, everybody's gonna, you know, I'm gonna take full blame for this. The clan spotlight, I totally dropped the ball on. But <laughs> since so many people are not playing the game, including myself, it hasn't even been something I've contemplated doing. Yeah. How many of those decals do you have, Brian? Um, I have three. So That's bull. I'm... Why didn't Langon send? I'm, I'm pissed. Langon, I didn't get any. I need, I, I, I would love to pump. Or to to pimp an H one Z one decal on the on the Jetta. That's like. And then he he sent me some of his Twitch uh, key rings. Oh how yeah. so oh, that's that's cool. We gotta get. So that. yeah, so so these are some things that I, we're gonna be doing some giveaways. Um, I'll send some you my raffles. address, Brian. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be doing some raffles to do uh, some thinking about some games because we have a ton of games that'll be kind of fun to. Um, to give out and we, we just if you first of all if you have a good idea for a contest uh, we're totally open to that any kind of, of contest that you can do um that we could do that would be an opportunity for us to give out things like this and we have three right now but you know this we definitely have a chance to get more um if more people are interested in them but yeah you can uh send it to contact at infectionpodcast.com and then, and then we'll be doing some contests here pretty yeah, soon. Any idea you have, I don't care if you think it's stupid, send us a contact because we and can. Of course, oh yeah, you can show that the shirt again. Brian picked the yep. shirt up, but that, that those are still available. That, that's on the website, infectionpodcast.com. Yep. So those are shirts that you can get. Um, yeah. So we'll be. Yeah. We'll be doing all kinds of things. Uh, it's infectionpodcast.spreadshirt.com for that. Um, so. You know, we're, we're working on it. We got we we're slow, slowly but surely we're building up our 
our assortment of gear. I'm really kind of ticked off about those uh, decals. I, I can't believe Langa didn't hook me up with any. Well, and I'm sure that he'll be more than happy to. And he's actually going to be printing up some that have our infection logo on them. Oh, never mind. I don't care about those ones. Then you can give those away. And I so, love the new ones. <laughs> That's good. Um, no, it, Ferment's asking if we're going to be doing some giveaways at the end of this stream. No, we. Well, um, this so, is, so this is our problem. We've been trying to figure out what's a good way to give away games. Cause, like we, Brian, Brian, how many games do you have on Steam? Like 700? Yeah, I've got something like that, but I have a ton of of codes that, because you get duplicate that are games. codes because they're all duplicates, and so I've got probably fifty plus games that I can give away. Yeah, so we just and we I know that Ferment has it. some as well that he was willing to throw into that. Yeah, we just we need we need we need a, like a legitimate contest to do something. So yeah, Ferment has a miscreated key. To do a raffle. Yeah, but the raffle on Mobot is like that. That for people that can't watch live, that's another thing. So we got to figure out some. I'd kind like of to contest. come up with something where people could submit something. Exactly. So because we have a lot of, of podcast listeners that are listening after the fact, um, you know, this is a this is a very the people that listen live are actually a small number of the overall, and so I think that I'd like to do something that everyone can participate in. Yeah, you know, here we go, Brian. I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. Whoever gets it right in chat. Uh, <laughs> the brand new car so, something i don't know but yeah we need we need a good and you know there's like the the raffle copter and i don't know just uh, something unique something that that you know you could show off your talents or show off something that you can provide um stress got it right it was six um that you could provide and then in in, in return you get like a game and and like a decal or a t-shirt or a hat or something cool like that but something where you yeah. can say hey you know hey i'm a i'm a really good uh adobe uh after effects guy and i can make this i'm going to make the a 3d logo of infection for something it, you know and stuff stuff like that so we need to work out some kind of contest where people can show off their skills and not just a follow us on twitter and you're going to win a their free game like something something like that so yeah we'll, we'll figure something out eventually Yep. So oh, also, if you have a day, suggestion, just I'll, send it also, in. Also, I got totally sidetracked. For this daybreak giveaway, you're also getting a free pair of Sony uh, headphones, earbuds. So If you win. Yeah, if you win. So there you go. Yep. Now, okay, here's something that's kind of a side subject, and I didn't put it in the notes, but uh -oh. I would like to get people's input on this. If With Sony, now daybreak, they have a subscription to access all of their games. Okay. So if you want to be able to play EverQuest, EverQuest 2, EverQuest, um, what is it, Landmark, the, all these different games in their library, you can pay, I think it's $15 a month or there's a discounted price if you pay yearly. And that gives you access to all of the premium versions of those. Do you think that they are going to include H1Z1 premium? Maybe that's unlimited number of... Uh, of, of battle royales or something like that inside of that package um do i think they will eventually eventually yes now right now they're not right now that would be stupid for them to their game is way too broken for them to do any kind of implementation for that i mean not gonna uh, not now, trying to once, make it once it truly goes free to play then they, do you think they'll include it with that package probably which i'd be okay with and and okay and then that being said do you think that that price is fair? So the fifteen dollars gets you access to all of their games. It gives you access to the premium because all of their games are free to yeah. play. Um, yeah. It gives you the premium, which gives you the unlimited access to what, many things. What would be a cool thing is if they did tiered prices. So it was like, all right, for one to three games, you, you get to select your one to three games. It's like seven dollars a month, and then for like unlimited games, the premiums, it's fifteen dollars a month. I mean, for me, yeah. it, like you could say, well, great, you get access to EverQuest and premium access to EverQuest too. I don't play any of those games. I don't really, I, I could I could give two craps if I have access to those. But it would be nice if they did, yeah. all right, maybe just for if you get access to, you get to your choice of one to three premium games you get want to uh, get the premiums on, you get those, and then maybe that's a discounted price. And then if it's for every game, maybe they add more perks. Maybe it's, you know, Unlimited Battle Royale and something if you get the access to all of the different games or something like that. Um, but fifteen dollars a month is a lot. Of, I mean, realistically, okay, fifteen dollars a month is a lot of money for you're getting Battle you're getting the premium of Planet Side Two. But I don't play those. I don't care. But that's what they're hoping is that you will. But uh, I, but so, I mean, I'm talking strictly H1Z1 is fifteen dollars a month worth unlimited Battle Royales. No, 
And I don't know. No, but, but the thing is, they'll be doing an offering separate from that to where you could subscribe individually to H1Z1. But I'm saying is overall, if you look at what you get with that $15 a month, you get premium access if at some point they include ever, or the H1Z1 with that. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games, the premium version of eight games. So you get EverQuest Next, I mean, um, you, EverQuest 2, EverQuest, Landmark, DC Universe, and Planet Side 2. You talk then, about, on paper, this looks like a great deal. Access to eight games for $15 a month, uh, premium access to eight games for $15 a month, that's great. But I'm not going to play any of those games besides H1Z1. I mean, that's just me. Other people might say, hey, you know, I've always been looking to try Planet Side 2. This is, you know, a reason to push me into it. Me, I really have no interest in any of those other games. So for me, the price is a little high. Yeah. Is it worth it? Of course it's worth it if you're interested in playing in other games. But if you're not, then $15 a month is a lot for Battle Royale. See, it, but for me, that temptation of, well, you know, you, you know, I mean, look at my game library. Exactly. But see, you're, you're, you will buy into it because you'll probably try out those other games. I know for a fact yeah. I will not be trying EverQuest or Planetside. If I buy that package, see for me, there's a lot of nostalgia with EverQuest because yeah, see, for me, there's EverQuest not. was the first online game that I ever played. Yeah, but and but it that, was the first of that experience yeah, for me. It wasn't for me, ever. I, I mean, I heard of EverQuest. Never even. When did EverQuest come out? It came out in I think it was '99. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I was not playing PC games at two. How so. old were you at '99? Yeah, two years two, old. Two years old. <laughs> so, that you know, I, I, the nostalgia isn't there for me. So it's it's, I don't know. It wouldn't no. be worth it for me, I, Brian. You know my gameplay style, and I don't play every. I don't play a lot of games. Like I, I play a few games, and that's about it. Like I just yeah. I play my few select games. I'm happy with those, and that's all I play. I don't. I don't really go out and 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 play other games. It, it, this would not be worth it for me. But for you, Brian, you know if you're gonna play a little EverQuest, play a little Planet Side, maybe. It's, See, it's like great Cram, deal. Cram in our chat. He plays EverQuest still, the original EverQuest. Okay. Now, for me, I tried going back because my they still have these servers up. I actually went and played my character that I created like in 2000. Um, and I could not remember any of the, uh, the keyboard controls whatsoever. <laughs> and so, you know, I went, I went on there and I wanted to, you know, because I have all these memories of what EverQuest was. Um, and it, it's amazing how much technology and things have changed and expectations have changed over the years to where... You look at EverQuest now, you know, that's where I'd be like, oh, I'd, I'd be interested in trying EverQuest 2, EverQuest Next, some of these other ones to see if I can get that same feel that I got in EverQuest, but not be so disappointed by, okay, man, the graphics look like that. Yeah, see, that, that's a thing for you, N not necessarily as important of a thing for me. So I, that, that for me, I'd be like, okay, I'd be willing to possibly pay $15 a month. And, and it'd be, I don't know if it goes down to $10 a month, it, whatever, if you pay a year at a time. It's like it's like $130 yeah. if you pay a year at a time. Now, okay, so now that we've done our EverQuest talk for the evening, do we have any other H1Z1 news, Brian, or are we, uh, are we good here? No, I think we're good on H1Z1 news. I, my, my, my biggest thing, I mean, out of all of this that we've said, is I really hope that, first of all, population comes back this next wipe. Yep. And I, I hope you guys are wrong. <laughs> and I hope that, <laughs> that enough people, just for the fact that they want to create girls and see if the girls are really naked. Oh, you know, God, you know, really? You I had mean, to go really, there, Brian. Honestly, you know, what are uh, half the guys going to be logging in to do just to see <laughs> you know, how, how, what's, how scantily clad is the woman in her underwear? <laughs> it, that's all they're going to care about. And for me, I don't. I I'm gonna have to. Great girl we're, characters. I'm gonna have to throw a disclaimer onto the beginning of this podcast that my ideas do not always reflect Brian's ideas. And well, I'm not saying that's my idea, but realistically, the infection that's po what uh, Brian Aldridge does not speak for Infection Podcast or Daybreak Game <laughs> Company with any thoughts he says during the show. Yeah, but the majority of the guys are gonna come back just to see that. And but I'm hoping that <laughs> enough people who have quit playing that out of the forty thousand people that were playing at one time before, I hope enough of the people that had stopped playing will say, oh, hey, look at all this new stuff I didn't realize was there still, that, that, that they didn't realize was there now. I hope we get enough of those people to where you get some people that actually stick from this, that yeah. we go from being 10,000 people simultaneous to 20,000 people, 30,000 people again, because I think that's what this type of a game needs is that shot in the arm 
and then them doing with maybe with these quality of life fixes enough to get it to where, all right, you know, this is something we can handle. And it's not a week to week. Oh, should we play today? How broken is it? Uh, you know, cause we have sometimes when it's great and I'm a leaky faucet mentality type of guy, you know, I, I usually, when things are going great, I don't think twice about it. You know, everything's going how it should. I don't see anything. It's when things really get broken is when I say something. And so uh, I, I, you know, I don't like it when there's, when things break so much that people stop playing for a week. You know, I want it to where they get on enough of a consistent basis to where the things that we really run into are annoyances. Yeah. You know, that the, the, they're not game breaking features like what we've been running into lately. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that is, uh, that's going to do it. Um, want to thank everybody for coming out and watching the show live. Our tactical problems were, yeah, they, those, yeah isn't that were, strange? Those like now it's just fine. I yeah. restarted Skype. Uh, so yeah, I, I wonder guess if that it was Skype it. or if it was, a, so it was, it was your side. Huh? Well, uh, your computer restarted, so I have no clue. Yeah, my my computer blue screened and rebooted well, itself, so it well, may have been. So yeah, so the, well, before you say it's my side, you know, maybe there's a problem <laughs> on your end, Brian. It's possible. It's a possible. And I was cr I was in Teamspeak and I hit the caps lock and it's like, no whisper client detected, no whisper <laughs> client detected, and the Skype is going off, and I'm like, oh my god, Dude, these, <laughs> the poor people listening to the audio. I'm so, if you are traveling in your car right now, I I I apologize for what you heard during the show. It was. It was not. I always apologize for what you hear during the show. It, it was not very good. It was just Skype, the bleeps going off on Skype, the whisper, you've been disconnected, you were moved from team. It was it was bad. Brian Aldridge, where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, of course. Um, just go to google.com forward slash plus Brian Aldridge. That'll take you right to my Google Plus page. Or if you want to go to biteoftech.com and that's with an I, that'll take you to my blog. Or, of course, go to infectionpodcast.com. Of course, still after this wipe, you know, if you haven't played for a while, this is my plea. You know, I'm always saying, come to our server, check out our clan. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to actually have a decent number of people on. If you play other games and, and, you know, that you're wanting to find a group of people just that you might get along with really well, make sure you come and check out our clan. Because as you, we said before, we're not just playing H1Z1. Um, yeah. I, I think that, that if you get in with the group, you'll find that, you just want to come and hang out and play with these guys because we've got a pretty cool group of people. So come check out our group. Um, if you're looking at doing a wipe after the wipe, moving your server to another uh, or clan to another server, make sure you think about our server blood scorn, bring your clan there. I think that, I think that there's still hope. <laughs> the, the, you know? the, the, there's a, there's a twinkle in the eye. It's still a hope, right? There, there's, there's light still at hope. the end of the tunnel. I think that's debatable. Yeah. That's debatable. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> My name is Nick Craig at Gamecast Live is my Twitter, InfectionPodcast.com is the website. If you guys have any suggestions, feedbacks, comments, or concerns, let us know, InfectionPodcast.com. Uh, the contact form is there. Uh, that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you guys next week on Infection. Have a good week, everybody. Bye.